at the area. to draw the rectangles like this way, right? Is this what you guys are all doing? Drew the rectangles above, but notice like what did yeah? What did we do? You find the point at like the two fifths, and then that's the top of the rectangle, the top height of the rectangle, and the estimate. Yeah, and now, but like which point from from this subinterval, which point am I using? The like zero point. The, yeah, the so the this curve is like going down. It has a negative derivative, so you know that. On any like sub interval, the highest point would be like the lowest number. Yeah, the lowest x value. Yeah, yeah. He's noticing like which point from each sub interval we're choosing. Which point from each sub interval do we choose over here? The last one, the right one. Yeah, there's actually an infinite number of them on any sub interval. So yeah, this this whole method that we're doing over here, this actually has a name. It is called RRAM. It is the right rectangular approximation method. The right rectangular approximation method. And, okay, it's a method for uh, approximating the area under the curve. And it's a rectangular approximation method because, duh, we're using rectangles. So the reason why we call it the right rectangular approximation method is because on each subinterval, we choose the value of the function at the right endpoint of that subinterval. So if we go to each subinterval, that's kind of the rule that we follow. We just sort of did it by duh, but if you really sort of want to program a computer to do this, you would say, okay, for every subinterval, use the one, use the point at the right to get the to get the y value. Whereas over here, just again intuitively, we use the um, uh, the so-called LRAM, the uh, left uh, rectangular approximation method. Uh, because um, we said for every one of these subintervals, let's use the value of the function at the left-hand endpoint of the subinterval. All right, and um, uh, he said even more, uh, Daniel Schaefer, about why we chose left or right. The actual prompt was to find a um, uh, an overestimate over here and an underestimate over here. And if you were listening to him, he kind of already said, when should I expect? using LRAM or RAM to get an overestimate or an underestimate? Catherine with a K. You can go right through your head. When do I expect, when is, um, when is LRAM and RAM going to be an overestimate or an underestimate to be expect? Maybe no, no. It's a hard question. Yeah. Now the top of your head is my hair right now. That's your face. Yeah. Um, or, or even uh, more simply, I think it just depends on whether the function about, is wait, increasing or decreasing. Yeah. This is not obvious yeah, yeah, yeah. at first. Um, what's wrong? No, it's good. Schaefer's kind of in frame. Wait, is your Yeah. Good. Um, good. So yeah. So imagine you are using uh, LRAM uh, versus RAM. 
and imagine your function is increasing versus your function decreasing. Well, let's just draw um, an increasing function. So here's an increasing function. Uh, and what... Oh, I need a loop. Uh, yeah, good. So uh, if I have an increasing function and I use LRAM, then for every subinterval, I'm drawing it like this, yeah? So just like kind of pictures worth a thousand words, of course this is going to be an underestimate, agree? Right? Yeah. And, yeah. and if I'm using RM, then for every subinterval, I am using, uh, or I am uh, using the right hand endpoint of the subinterval to construct my rectangle. And now I'm going to get an overestimate. And for decreasing functions, it's just the opposite. Now if I use the left, endpoint, I get an overestimate, and uh, if I use the right endpoint, I get an underestimate. All right, and, uh, and actually, uh, Daniel Shaver kind of got right to the heart of the issue, uh, the very first thing he said, which is, this: the, you could just draw these pictures and just look at them and just be like, oh, of course, duh, but if you really want to sort of think it out and talk it out, or even say, prove it, you can, you can just think about what you're really doing when you're making these rectangles. So take this case, for example. This function's increasing, right? Which means it gets bigger and bigger overall, but also within every subinterval, it's getting bigger. By, by choosing to sample this function at the left endpoint of each subinterval, what I'm essentially doing is saying is choosing the smallest this function ever is on that subinterval as the representative of the function on that subinterval. So, of course, that will be an underestimate of the true area under the curve, because I'm using the function's lowest value as, as, a, as, a, uh, as an estimation of what it really is. You with me? And there are all kinds of other things you can do. You can take midpoints, you can do other things like that. Good? Good, say nothing. All right. Okay, let's actually do this. Uh, kind of fast over here. Uh, so, what should we do? If we still go in and try to like label these, then we get, you know, 2 times 2 fifths, comma, f of that. I smell on a moving camera. 3 times 2 fifths, comma. <laughs> well, you know, they got really, they got, had a lot of fun saying f that every time. Uh, 4 times 2 fifths, comma, f that. And then this is like 1 times 2 fifths, comma, f of that. And then this I would even write, kind of sounds a little bit obnoxious, but for pattern recognition purposes, I'll write it as 0 times 2 fifths, comma, f of that. Okay, uh, good. And now, um, can we start to write out what is the area then? What's the area of the, um, now what's the area of the first rectangle? The area of the first rectangle is uh, 2 fifths times uh, f of uh, careful. For the, oh, the, the, zero, my bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah, f of like zero times two fifths. Okay, and now what's the, uh, who's that, Neo, what's the area of the second rectangle? Um, two fifths times f of one. Yeah. What's the area of the um, third rectangle, BJ? Wait, 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 careful. What's the width of the rectangle? Two fifths. Just two fifths. Times? F of two times two fifths. Yeah, good. And then I'll just dot, dot, dot it to the end, which is the last one is like two fifths times F of four times two fifths. All right, so do you guys kind of feel this as like an off by one kind of like issue with the index, because we're using yeah, so when I go to write this in sigma notation, I have to be like advanced. Which of how do I write this in sigma notation? Uh, two fifths times sigma i equals zero to four. Yeah, I'm on the comp I A P. Zero <laughs> to four because just like because right, and then f of I times two fifths. Yeah. Okay, good. If, now, what's the the sort of problem with this is that if I'm going to use those fo summation formulas, all those summation formulas assume that I'm starting from one. So that's like kind of like you have to be like careful, 
right? In past years, I like, didn't let people do this because I didn't trust them. But now I've just decided it's really not, not that hard. So all right, so let's do this. Wait. What do we get? Let's so, <coughs> skip to that step because we don't actually have lesson sigmas and build that step. Like, uh, oh, okay. He says, he says, can we just like do previous work? Which is to say that this is still the sum from i equals 0 to 4 of, and like notice how we kind of did it all already, right? The plugging it into the function, the expanding it, and like, so we can just kind of go right to there. Yeah, Actually, sure. the one like below, like the beta 125, I think. So or even works. below. Uh, okay, yeah. sure. Okay, sure, 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 sure. Uh, I'll just write it one more time, but then, yeah. So this is like this. Uh, plus five, and then he's saying we can also, well actually what I think is probably best to do just like right now is um, is get rid of that zeroth term. Because uh, I still want to use those formulas. So I, this, there's, there's tons of different ways to do this. It's all kind of the same stuff. But really, uh, if, I'm, if I want to be careful, I need to like peel off the zeroth term. So what is this when i is zero? Or what, what's in the brackets when i is zero? Just five, right? So I have a five plus the sum from one to four. This is why like indices are like annoying, right? Because you have to actually like be careful. So everyone see what I just did? I just took the sum from zero to five. This is not the only way to do this, but it's a way. I took the sum from zero to four rather, and I rewrote it as the, this is what I get when i equals zero plus what's left over is from one to four. Can everyone handle this? No, that's kind of okay too. But all right, all right. Let's finish this off. So then we get, uh, what do we get? If I multiply through the two fifths, I get just like five plus, um, whoa, two, yeah, plus, um, and now I distribute the two fifths through, so then I'm just going to get like negative eight over 125, sum from i equals one to four of i squared, uh, and then uh, plus, uh, 2 times the sum from i equals 1 to 4 of 1. Who is with me? Skipping some steps and stuff, but I think you're more or less there. If not, go slower. But also go faster. Okay, uh, so this becomes, uh, this becomes like 8, I think, right? So then that's really just like 10. So I get 10 minus 8 over 125 times, what is the sum from i equals 1 to 4 of i squared? It would be... 4 times 5 times 9 over 6. Okay, so the 5 cancels the 125. The, what else is going on here? 6 cancels the 9, 3, 2, advanced fractions. Um, so, 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 so. so what is that? Like negative 48 over 25? Someone back me up there. 10 yeah. minus 48 25ths. Okay, so really that's like 250 minus 48 over 25. So really that's like 202 over 25. Also known as 8.08. Alright, this is very exciting. This tells me, also now can you raise that board, that uh, the true area is for sure less than 8.08. I'm willing to make a bold claim now that the area is somewhere in between 6.48 and 8.08. What? And I would also like to say that I'm like not that happy about that estimation. It's like somewhat crappy. How could we do better? Everyone chant all at once. More rectangles. More rectangles. The more rectangles, the better. Five is like not very good. What about 50? What about 500? Let's shoot for the stars. 600 maybe. All right. Um, good. So, or even better than 600. Infinity, whatever that means. Okay, next page. We're going to go really fast. Um, okay. Uh, we have a function, f of x equals negative x squared plus 1. And we want to find the area under this curve from... Sorry, just regular x squared plus 1. We want to find, thank you, we want to find the area in this curve from x equals 1 to x equals 4. Alright, so here's one. This is, I think, pretty, I think this is the hardest thing we've done so far in this class. 
just uh, 